Corporate Information and Technology Expert, a graduate of University of Ibadan, Computer Science, top of her class, a system analyst for Shell Petroleum Limited, actually, and her banking career, Magnum Trust Bank, Access Bank, UBA, and Echo Bank. And, of course, uh, we'll be listening to see how the confirmation of... Distinguished colleagues, we have a nominee before us, In the person of uh, Dr. Bosu Tijani, right? Can you just give us a brief resume of yourself and thereafter answer questions from distinguished senators? Your Excellency, uh, the Senate President, Senator Godzilla Pabio. Your Excellency, the Deputy Senate President, Senator Jibrin Barrao, distinguished members of the Senate leadership, a very special recognition for the distinguished senators from my home state, Senator Shuaib Afala Bisalisu, Senator Lamileko Adiola, and His Excellency, Senator Tumagbenga Daniel, and of course, all other distinguished senators of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. My name is Dr. Latin Bosuntijani. I'm from Itoko in Abelkoto South local government area of Ogun State. I was born in Agege, Lagos State, and happily married with three kids. I stand before this esteemed chamber today, humbled and honored by the trust reposed in me by His Excellency the President, Bala Hamed Tinubu, GCFR, as a ministerial nominee of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to, to Mr. President for nominating me to serve in this crucial capacity and to the Senate for giving me the opportunity to present myself for screening. My journey into public service has been driven by a deep-rooted passion for our great nation and an unyielding commitment to its progress. Throughout my career, I have been privileged to witness firsthand the untapped potential and boundless possibilities that Nigeria holds. However, I'm, acutely, I'm also acutely aware of the challenges that, that lie ahead of us. And it is with this sense of purpose and determination that I present myself before you today. At this point, I would like to share a bit of context as to who I am and what I can contribute in support of Mr. President's agenda, of course, subject to your confirmation. Academically, I hold a bachelor's degree in economics from the University of Joss, a master's degree in information systems and management from Warwick Business School, and a doctorate degree in innovation and economic development from the University of Leicester in the UK. In addition, I've also attended several executive and professional courses in innovation, leadership, and economic development from institutions such as the Harvard Kennedy School of Government, Stanford University, and the African Leadership Institute. I am a fellow of the Center for Democracy, Development, and Rule of Law at the prestigious Stanford University, and I'm also a Desmond Tutu Leadership Fellow. At the minute, I'm an adjunct researcher focused on digital epidemiology at the Nigerian Institute of Medical Research, and also an adjunct researcher with the VIT School of Governance in South Africa. With focus on driving the application of knowledge for enterprise and economic prosperity, my career path has taken me through roles with the International Trade Center in Switzerland, with Hewlett Packard also in Switzerland, and Para Innovation Network in the UK. I returned to Nigeria to co-found Co-Creation Hub in 2010 as Nigeria's first technology innovation hub, which has now grown from Yaba to become the largest technology, technology hub in Africa, with physical presence in Kenya, Rwanda, and Namibia. We also deliver projects and activities that reaches over 17 countries in Africa. I've also been privileged to offer my service in support of critical industry advisory groups in Nigeria and abroad, including as a member of the Presidential Advisory Group on Technology and Creativity, 
also as a member of the UK Advisory Committee on Digital Access Africa, as an advisor and committee member to the National Economic Summit Group on Science and Technology, as a member, current member of the Project Steering Committee of Lagos State Government Technology Cluster for Yaba, and more recently as a member of the Expert Advisory Group to the European Commission on Mainstreaming Technology and Innovation in the Relationship Between Africa and Europe. I believe and care deeply about the potential of Nigeria as a prosperous country that is driven by innovation. This has been a strong motivating factor in all I do, and I've spent the last 15 years contributing to deepening the technology innovation ecosystem in Nigeria and Africa through extensive collaboration with some of the world's largest technology companies and development agencies. I'm particularly passionate about enabling and supporting homegrown solutions to some of the most critical challenges in sectors like education, public health, agriculture, trade, and governance. An expression of this can be seen in my support to the work of young entrepreneurs like Temigo Atumbosu of LifeBank, Ife Dara Johnson of Health Tracker, Presinide of Stairs, Inyolu Aboyeji of Andela and Flutterwave, Jumokeda Da of Taylor, Hio Isudeme of Wampot, and also Tega Eo Team of Figo, among so many others. It is my conviction that we must prioritize the role of technology and innovation in raising the productivity level across our economy. We can leverage technology to increase the contribution of multiple sectors such as education, creative industry, financial services, manufacturing, agriculture, transportation, security to our GDP. Many of the prosperous nations that we admire have been built on a strong foundation for innovation. We are a blessed nation with significant young population, which is a critical resource for harnessing the opportunities offered by technology and innovation in support of Mr. President's stated goal of building a prosperous Nigeria for all. My commitment to His Excellency, Mr. President, to you distinguished senators and indeed all Nigerians is to give my best with the same passion and conviction that, that, that I've demonstrated all my life to achieve the President's economic and prosperity agenda. I look forward to working with all stakeholders across government and the organized private sector to provide intentional support that empowers the best of our young population so they can continue to contribute to the achievement of the prosperous, inclusive, peaceful society that we all desire. Thank you, distinguished senators, for your time today as I look forward to working with you all to achieve our collective goals for our great nation, Nigeria. God bless His Excellency the President and long live the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you. Distinguished Senator Abdul Fatai Buhari. Mr. President, sitting at the chair, distinguished colleague, Buhari Abdel Fattah, or you not? Dr. Boson, congratulations. I have two questions for you. Number one, on the 29th of July, 2019, you tweeted against the passport and citizen of Nigeria. Do you still believe in that your tweet today? That's number one. Number two, when you look at your CV, your certificate, that's the O level, and the primary school certificate, they are not there. And even your first degree, you came with a testimonial that was issued 20 years ago. So how did you get admission into the University of Georgia? One. Number two, how, what happened to your certificate? How, have you not taken it since 20 years ago that you have given that testimonial? Thank you. Please uh, take that first question again. Take the first question. Yes, uh, take it because many senators did not hear you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. President. On the 21st of July, 2019, Dr. Bosso tweeted against the, against Nigeria that it does 
not appreciate the Nigerian passport and Nigeria as a nation. My question now is that, yes, the Nigerian passport and Nigeria as a nation. Let me, let, let me quote it exactly from what the way you put it. Nigeria is a bloody expensive tag to have against your name. Leave patriotism for a minute. That tag is bloody waste of time and energy. But a country. End of quote. So the question now is that this tweet, does he still have belief in it or he has changed his mind about the country now? That's the question. Because when he was reading his resume, he was giving patriotism of how he served, blah, 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 blah. If he has changed now, I just wanted to know, and I want Nigerians to know, because Mr. President, in the last two, three days, his case has been on and off in Nigeria. That it has been trending yeah, in Nigeria. So the issue now is that, do you still believe in what you said in 2019? Oh, you have changed your mind about the country. That's just something. I think um, the corollary to that question will be that he will answer which nationality is standing here now. Because if he's saying that it's a bloody waste of time to, to have a Nigerian passport or to be a Nigerian. So coming here, it's possible that he may not even be here as a Nigerian. So when, when he's going to answer, when he's going to answer that question, when he's going to answer, he will also tell us whether he's here as a Nigerian or whether he has taken another country's citizenship. Uh, the Senate Senator Issa Jibrin. Uh, uh, well, um, Your Excellency, Mr. President, uh, very distinguished colleagues, I am Issa Jibrin, representing the very good people of uh, Kogi East. Well, uh, I'm taken aback by Buhari's uh, comments, but I will still go ahead with what I intend to say, because he needs to really clear himself of all these allegations first. But having said that, and assuming he, cl assuming he clears himself, he is an IT person. Your Excellency, there are so many inefficiencies within the government sector, especially in the areas of revenue collections. Please uh, use your seat. Uh, the, the, the distinguished Senator Solomon Adiola, Olami Lekon. Yeah, you are from Ogun State. The nominee is from Ogun State. So, am I right? Huh? Uh, okay. So, before before he answers, maybe as an elder in the Senate. You may wish to educate us whether he's actually Nigerian before he confirms it. Mr. President, very, very dis. Mr. President, sitting as chair, my name is Mohamed Ogoshionao. I represent Nasarawa South. I come under Order 10. And with the permission of the chair, I might want to read the proof. Any senator may rise at any time to speak upon a matter of privilege suddenly arising, and he shall be prepared to move without a notice, a motion declaring that a contempt of or breach of privilege has been committed. I want the Senate President's attention. <coughs> Sir.
Yes, sir. The question the chair put before the nominee as to the nationality that he belongs, that he is standing here, must be answered first before we go on. Because answering any other thing apart from that one will be a breach of my privilege and the privilege of this chamber. So he must declare whether he is still a Nigerian or he is coming from another country. Thank you very much. Uh, point, point of order is sustained. Um, nominee, please uh, go ahead and answer the question whether you are still a Nigerian uh, be, uh, and whether the, the tweet came from you. Then from there we proceed. Uh, first, uh, I want to put on record that we are very appreciative. We are very appreciative of Mr. President for discovering talents like you and bringing you to the fore, and particularly for giving the opportunity to very young people. Uh, if it's something that you did because you were very young, and now you are getting a bit older, uh, you let us know. And if you are still a Nigerian, let us know. But we believe you have impeccable credentials, and that we are very impressed that young people are being given opportunity to join this government. So, so, so don't get us wrong. We just want to know whether you are from Sierra Leone or some other place, since Nigeria is not good. Please go on. Thank you, Excellency, uh, Senate President. Thank you also for bringing up this issue, uh, distinguished Senator Buhari. I'm going to ask that you please listen to everything I say as if I'm your son, because I will speak from my heart. And everything I'll say today can be proven. I've spent the last 15 years of my, my life going all, all across the world, looking for people to support young people who believe they can use technology to help lift this country forward. I've done this in so many ways, very loud and subtle. One of the most subtle things I've done is that since founding my company, we've opened now in four countries. And every time you get to the lobby of our office in this country, you will see an artwork there. And embedded in that artwork is the flag of Nigeria. Embedded in that artwork. If you go to the Kigali in Rwanda today, you will find that. If you go to Nairobi, you will find it. If you go to Namibia, you will find it. Everywhere we go. In 2019, as a sequel to something I did with Google, uh, the business I do, which is to support young people to build businesses, require that they raise money. And the ability to raise money relies on the ability to attract investors from abroad. And I did everything possible to build a company that is fully domiciled in Nigeria. In the technology space, people had this domicile their businesses in Nigeria. I domiciled that business in Nigeria. In 2019, we decided to improve Nigeria's opportunity to be able to raise more money that we need to be doing a tour of the whole world. But we didn't want to do it just as Nigeria, but as Africa. So I opened up 15 slots. This whole trip was paid for by Google. Nothing came to my pocket. We gave about eight slots to Nigerians. Because I have a second citizen, which is a British passport, I was in the UK, and I was trying to apply for my Chinese visa because I did not need visa to every other country. I got to the embassy, and I was told that it would take me two days to get my Chinese visa. I was excited. And the gentleman said, what do you do? Where's your pay slip? I said, I run my business. He says, we have to see your bank account statement. I said, I'm happy to provide it, but my business is fully domiciled in Nigeria. The moment I mentioned Nigeria, the gentleman said they have to do a special check on me. And it was going to take minimum two weeks. In anger. I tweeted what you read, which was paraphrased wrongly. One, uh, I've also been given a taste of what young people have been doing to all of you as well, which is the tweet you read is just the first part of that tweet. The second part specifically mentioned that for us to lift this country up, we must find a way to correct our image, to project positive image. 
because I don't want my two young girls to grow up because they're going to be proud Nigerians, I don't want them to grow up to experience the same thing. This is something that can be proven. What they've given to you, sir, is just a screenshot of the first one, which is convenient. I'm very passionate about Nigeria, very. As I'm standing in front of you, I've just closed a business that I've been working on for two years, which is going to support 36 Nigerian entrepreneurs with 65 million naira to build technology that's specifically focused on education. I do not do this because of my pocket. I'm standing here with you today because people know me for the work I've done, not because of my father or mother, because they're both late. I do not have political connections. I am extremely passionate about Nigeria. What it takes for Mark Sugarbag to say I'm going to Africa for the first time, and before meeting anybody, it was me he came to, was a lot of due diligence on my passion and interest. What it took for the founder of Twitter to come and meet me as a leader when I wasn't recommended was for my passion and interest. And just a couple of weeks ago, when Mr. President was inaugurated, Bill Gates was in Nigeria to speak to the young people about the hope and opportunities that exist in this country. I was the one who hosted him. He was nationally televised. And he gave a lot of hope to our young people. I am not what is being represented online. I might have said things out of passion and support for young people. On this matter, lastly, because I support a lot of young people, we give them opportunity to come to Yaba to learn software development, to build businesses of their own. So I, I used to spend almost 30, 40 percent of my time going to look for ways to bail young people out of, out of police station because they were found with laptops in their bags, not because there was any evidence to show that these people are fraudulent people. It was out of these hands. I nice another young Nigerian to say something. I said, it's Abu. Thank you, Mr. Mr. President, sitting at chair. You will live long, Mr. President. God bless you. Mr. President, sit, uh, sitting at chair, a few days ago, I commended the president of Nigeria for nominating many women into his cabinet. He kept his promise. Most of these women, if you look at their average age, 39 years, average. If you add, put all of them together, divide their age, give it at 70 to 39 years. A young man is also standing before us today. In line with Mr. President's promise to young Nigerians, 
that you will be part of my government. And he brought a young man. Look at his great, look at his dressing, Mr. President, green and white. That is Nigerian. <laughs> he came with Nigerian flag because of his passion for this country. <laughs> Mr. President will not lie to you. Let me speak in pretty English. Sometimes this country they chalk. It they chalk us. Mr. President, a few days ago, I was coming back from Kenya on the assignment that this parliament sent me. When I landed at Addis Ababa International Airport, I saw Nigerians being hoarded by a corner. Denied flight. I came out of my own, I came out of the line, and I asked the immigration people there, why are you keeping these people without them boarding a plane? They told me I should go back to my line. I removed my diplomatic passport. I said, I'm a diplomat. I want to know why they are not boarding the flight. The moment they saw my international passport, red passport, they directed me to a seat, and I sat down there. What I'm saying, I'm on live television. Some Nigerians were in that flight, and they saw me when I left my queue. And I found out what they did. And I told them, give me back these Nigerians. Let me take them to my country and hand them to immigration in my country. Most of them, Mr. President, they were treated in such a manner because they are using green passport. Sometimes, when young people tweet what they tweet and they express their frustration on social media, I want you to know that we are doing this out of the love that we have for this country. Not that we hate this country. We have nowhere to go. This is our country. This is an orphan without a father, without a mother, without a godfather, recognized by the president for his work and presented to serve. Most of these young people who are leaving the country, Mr. President telling them, come back. Don't be settled from America. Don't be settled from England. Come back, Nigeria. Let's build this country together. And that's a Mr. President nominated him to come back home and offer this country. We commend Mr. President for the love that they have for youth for women and his vision for a new Nigeria. Colleagues, please, I beg you as a young person, when you see us sometimes you express passion, support us as your sons, as your daughters. Don't use your, our age against us. Use our age to see that we have this country. I beg colleagues, this boy is very intelligent. Take a bow and go, please. <laughs> Uh, honestly, uh, Senator Abu, you know, you will agree with me that this Senate has been very kind to you. In spite of all the noise you make in the Senate, we tolerate you because we recognize the youthfulness in you. Uh, I'm very proud of your speech today. Uh, the two Senator Solomon and this is your citizen. Say something and let him come forward and take leave of the Senate. Thank you, Mr. President, <clears throat> very distinguished colleague. Let me start by thanking Mr. President for identifying yet another talented Nigerian. Mr. President, let me commend the nominee for one thing, for the fact that he admitted that yes, that tweet emanated from him, and the intention surrounding that tweet was not in any way to disparage or destroy Nigeria as a country, but out of sheer frustration that he encountered in the Chinese embassy. The only area that I strongly believe he will have added to this is sharing his experience in the Chinese embassy with Nigerians so that you will give us a platform for us as a government to call on the Chinese embassy to ask why Nigerians is being treated this way. Yes, sir. But for hiding that and treating out of sheer frustration is one area that I am not in support of. But Mr. President, distinguished colleague, Bosun Tijani standing before us in Nigeria, an IT guru, 
somebody in his opening remarks has shown how technology can be used to improve our economy. An economist by, uh, by academics, an IT guru by profession. Mr. President, distinguished colleague, you will quite agree with me that a country that is not fintech compliance at this time and age should know that he is yet to overcome many, many challenges that is confronting that nation. Ashiwajibola Ahmed Tinumbu, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, someone that Nigeria never believed can throw up somebody like Bosun Tijani, a 46-year-old Nigerian, 41-year-old Nigerian going 42, to be a minister of the Federal Republic is doing it again. And that was how he started in Lagos. He discovered Bosun when Bosun was 42. He discovered me when I was less than 30. When you are 41, I you discovered you. He discovered me when I was less than 30 years. And today, I have kept the flag flying. Yes, sir. That is the generation that Ashwadu believes in. And these are the future of Nigeria. I want to plead with my colleague that irrespective of the shortcomings of Bosun Tijani, let's take it as useful exorbitant. And it's here before us to tell us that he has the solution. He has what it takes to contribute to the development of this country. And he has decided to leave his businesses and leave his connection in the IT world to come and add value to the government of President Bola Ahmed Tunumbu. I want to plead with my colleague that don't let us throw away the, the, the baby and the water. The man has appealed before us and he has accepted to the fact, and even go ahead, I don't know, he has apologized. Okay, maybe in his submission. He has not even committed any of it according to his submission. But out of his sheer frustration, he has explained. My dear colleague, I plead with you, I plead with you, that to please, okay, I apologize on his behalf and say that we should allow Mr. Bosuti Jadi, a born of the state indigenous, to take a bow and go. Thank you, Mr. President. Wait, wait. Uh, please, uh, the minority leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Order! Thank you, distinguished colleagues. Mr. President, I want to join all other senators that have spoken to congratulate our dear President President Bola Ahmed Tinibu for selecting young Nigerians to also be part of his cabinet, especially the women and the youths. With regards to our brother, Dr. Boston, congratulations. But Mr. President, I wish to advise this young man that there are times, no matter the level of our frustration, we must be cautious with what we write on the social media. I'm saying this because I have another tweet from him, which was written by him by 10.05 p.m. in April 21st, 2021. With the kind permission of Mr. President, I would like to read this tweet. He said, who conducted a security check on him when he was appointed? What sort of checks are done by at the Nigerian Senate when they confirm appointees and the media. Question for another day. Until we ask 
the right questions, these morons will continue to take us for granted. Mr. President, sir. Mr. President. I want to Mr. President, like I said earlier, this is a young man who is well read. I want to ask, having come from my alma mater, I'm also from the University of Joss, and I've taught there in University of Joss for 15 years. I find it very difficult to believe that a graduate of University of Joss will write this on the personality of the Nigerian Senate. I want to ask, sir, are you the author of this tweet or not? Thank you. Well, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, Senate leader. Mr. President, very distinguished colleagues, I have a perspective to share with our distinguished colleagues. And I have a perspective to share with Nigerians especially those among our youth who in the last 48 hours since the name of Dr. Bosun Tijani was sent to this hallow chamber as a ministerial nominee. Our youth are divided on this matter. There are some who are supporting him. There are some who are also sharing other tweets from him similar to those that have been read out here. The truth about it is, beyond these two tweet messages, there are some other ones being shared online. And what is the underlining thing here? And what is the perspective that I want to share? Consider the dates of these uh, of these tweets, and recall the events that took place in Nigeria. Some of my own children, and some of our own children were all part of the streets. Standing between before us, sir, is an is, I mean an NSAS protester, if you can so cl classify him. That is the truth about it. My own daughter, who was not born in Nigeria, I didn't hide my family in the U.S. I didn't take my family out of the out of Nigeria after I came into public service. I was in the U.S. doing my master's degree. I was there practicing as an attorney when I gave birth to my own children. So they were not born here. But when my daughter was done schooling, she told me she wanted to come to Nigeria for her national service. And I was very glad. My daughter joined the end SARS protests. Around the same time, all these tweets were going on. Very many of our own children ask us questions. Mr. Mr. Pre Mr. President, I need your protection. All I'm trying to do is share a perspective. The same president, these are the issues for me. Number one, number one, an NSAS prote protester who believed he was a spokesperson for his own generation today has come to see the need to join hands with us to build this nation and bring all those ideas around with the organized protest on board to further build Nigeria and rebrand Nigeria. That's number one. More importantly, number two, the same President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, a citizen as he then was, not in any official position, who was accused or alleged as having taken soldiers to toll gate plaza in Lagos to, sh to shoot and protester is the one who today, by the grace of God, President and Commander-in-Chief of Nigeria, has sent Dr. Bosun Tijani 
as a nominee to this chamber because he also believes that they have something to offer. So let's look at it from all these perspectives and know that this man standing be, uh, before us did what any of our children could have done. At that point, based on their own understanding of what was going on, he, 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 he portrayed a scenario of how most of the people he was struggling to help were being arrested by the police because they had laptops in their bags, not because they were criminals. Let us remember what happened in this country. We need to move on with this generation. We need to put this behind us. So, of course, if he said anything that he shouldn't have said, he's here to apologize. That's not the, the problem. But let's take it beyond that and be less emotional about this issue. But we must protect the integrity of this institution. I agree, you know, with our colleagues who are saying this. And our own youth must also learn from this, that even in the face of anger or protest, you must mind the language that you use. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Well, let me, uh, just before I listen to any other thing, let me point out the, the, the distinguished, uh, distinguished uh, leader of the Senate, that even if it was that your child that came before us here, that child will still face the same question. The, the questions being asked are not, uh, nobody, I don't think any of them has ever met him. I don't think any, any person here has any objection to his nomination. And I don't think anybody here is against him. We are rather appreciative of Mr. President's choice. However, sometimes the past has a way of following us. And I think, I think we can make progress. I will give you an example. The National Digital Economy Policy and Strategy 2020 to 2023 that involves ICT parks, entrepreneurship, innovators, innovators uh, youth empowerment, which will break it down to solid infrastructure, soft infrastructure, service, in fact, all these policies, it was part of those who developed these policies that he believes can empower young people. When Mr. President was coming on board at Eagle Square, I said that I learned a lot from him when he was governor. I turned boys into men, as a governor in my state, and that he, he will come if he won the election to be president in Nigeria that it will turn a lot of Nigerian boys into men. I think this is one of such. Now, if we want to, if we sit here for the next five minutes, somebody will bring out another very derogatory uh, tweet from him, whether it was done in the heat of anger, or whether it was uh, in collaboration with your child, I, I, I wouldn't know. But uh, the major thing there is that he has a very good opportunity on live television to tender apologies to his elders for his uh, youthful exuberance and his mistakes that we move on. Dr. 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 Tijani, uh, Dr. Bozun Tijani, this last tweet and many others that will come, like the one you called your elders. Look at somebody like look at somebody like Senator Gumer. I'm sure he was in the Senate there when you said that he was a Maroon. So uh, 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 do you still believe that senators are Maroons? Or do you have an apology to make? If you can tender an apology, we can move on. And then if you also believe now in your Nigeria, we can still move on. Your, Your Excellency, uh, um, Senate President, and also uh, distinguished senators. <laughs> distinguished senators. Um, I was raised properly as a Yoruba boy, both in Agege and Abelkuta, so I do understand that we're not meant to disrespect our elders, and that's not the training that we're given. Uh, my father probably won't be proud of me uh, for all these allegations, but one thing he'll be proud of as well is that the passion that led me to those mistakes has also given me the opportunity to contribute to the development of this country. So I want to profusely apologize to everyone in this hall, including anyone anywhere in Nigeria 
that may have been offended about everything I said. I ask that you please, in the process of accepting my apology, that you look at the undertone of everything I've said. I didn't say it to spite. I said it out of frustration and love. So please accept my sincere apologies, please. Uh, distinguished senators, distinguished colleagues, we have before us a young man, a young Nigerian, Senator. Distinguished Senators. Distinguished Senator, please again accept my apology if I went too far in explaining. I'm absolutely sorry for for everything I've said. I'm sorry. Distinguished Senators, we are all fathers, except for Senator Jimmy Kuta, who is not yet married. Let, let, we are all fathers, and our children do air. We cannot throw the baby with the bad water away. We recognize his intellect. We recognize his contribution. We thank Mr. President for being a forgiving father, despite all these tweets. And I think on behalf of the Senate, I want to accept your apology and uh, uh, keep up the good work of creating opportunities for young people to grow uh, so that they will not uh, have the kind of anger that led you to uh, make all those things. Your, apology, your apologies are accepted. Uh, congratulations on your nomination. You may now step forward, take a bow and leave. Point of order, Mr. President. No, not on this matter. Not on this matter. Not on this matter. Point of order. Yeah. 